Let's see what is affinity. So affinity is the strength of association between the ligand and the receptor. This is our ligand or the agonist and this is our receptor. Now in order to bind to a receptor the functional groups on the ligand must interact with the complementary surfaces of functional groups on the receptor. So the functional groups on the ligand should bind with the functional groups on the receptor. The reason why we call agonist ligand is because of our basic chemistry concept according to which the ligand is a molecule which possesses functional groups that bind to other species to form a complex. Now here our ligand or the agonist has made a complex with the receptor which we call our agonist receptor complex. Now basically in this complex the functional groups on the agonist have bound to the specific binding domains on the receptor protein. Now these binding proteins or the binding domains or pockets on the receptor are usually different amino acid residues. Now for those who are interested in the molecular aspects of this pharmacodynamic concept let me go into further details of what exactly happens in such agonist receptor interactions. Let's again take the example of adrenaline which is a catecholamine. The catecholamines contain a catechol ring which is a benzene ring with two adjacent hydroxyl groups. It also possesses an amine group in the side chain. Now adrenaline and noradrenaline are the two well-known catecholamines. The other noteworthy catecholamine is dopamine which is a neurotransmitter and that determines several behaviors in the brain. Well, you may know that being in love increases the release of catecholamines. The adrenaline rush causes the heart to beat faster along with irregular breathing space that you feel, while dopamine is responsible for the euphoria. Dopamine basically controls the brain's reward and pleasure center Interestingly, the dopamine is at all time high when we are first pursuing a relationship with someone. Now, this is how we develop affinity for someone. However, there is one downside to that neurotransmitter, and that is, too much of a dopamine in a relationship can underlie unhealthy emotional dependence on our partner. According to another study, after about four years in a marriage, Dopamine decreases and attraction goes down for some couples. But I'm sorry this was from psychophysiology. Let me leap back into the pharmacodynamics of the drug receptor affinity. So let me show you the structure of beta-2 receptor. The beta-2 receptor is a GPCR, a G protein coupled receptor. It is also called 7TMR or 7 transmembrane receptor why we call it 7 transmembrane receptor because the receptor spans the cell membrane seven times you can see the seven domains here one two three four five six and seven so these seven domains crisscross the cell membrane and that happens seven times so seven transmembrane receptors and since these receptors after agonist binding activate the G proteins inside the cell so they are called G protein coupled receptors. Now let's see how some functional groups on adrenaline will interact or make a bonding with the functional groups on the receptor. Here the red chemical structure is your adrenaline this one. You can see there is a peptide bond formation between the amino group of the adrenaline and the carboxylic group of the aspartic acid on the third domain of the beta 2 receptor. This is third domain. On the other hand, the two hydroxyl groups on the adrenaline, these two hydroxyl groups, and the two hydroxyl groups coming out of the serine residues on the fifth transmembrane domain of the receptor they interact together form a hydrogen bonding and this solves the mystery 
as to how these agonists bind to these receptors and create affinity for themselves.